All right, for today's lesson, we'll be doing Unit 8, Lesson 8H, Day 1. We'll be graphing linear equations from a table. Our objective for today is going to be to graph linear equations on a coordinate plane by using a table, graphing special cases of linear equations, and determining if a point on a line is or determining if a point is on a line, which would mean that it would be a solution. Some key terms that you're going to be hearing over this unit are standard form of a line equation, which this is going to be your standard form right here, ax plus by equals c, and then slope-intercept form of a linear equation, which is y equals mx plus b. Again, you'll be hearing these throughout the unit, slope definitely in a few days from now. The steps that we're going to do, we're going to be, one, making a table, two, picking three x values. The ones that we're going to be using are negative one, zero, oops, sorry about that, I don't know why that happened, um, negative one, zero, and one, and then we're going to plug in x values to find y, and then plot our points and connect. So let's go ahead and take a look at example one. It says graph the equation y equals 2x plus 1. Now, in unit 7, we did construct some tables. So you can do one of two things. You can go ahead and plug in our x values to solve for y, which I'm going to show you and remind you how to do right now. Or you can also put those into your calculator and come up with the table. So first, let's go ahead and plug it in. So we're going to do 2. Wherever we have an x, we're going to plug in negative 1 plus 1. Now negative 2, I'm sorry, positive 2 times negative 1 will be negative 2 plus 1 will give us negative 1. So our first point that we're going to plot is negative 1, negative 1. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing for 0. 2 times 0 plus 1. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0, 1. Okay, same thing for the last one. 2 times 1 plus 1 will give us 3. So our x value will be 1, our y value will be 3. Alright, so what I want you guys to all do right now, pause the video and take out your ID cards. If you don't have it on you, your student ID, go ahead and grab one or something with a straight edge. Okay, now you should have your card. We're going to go ahead and plot each of these points. So I'm going to go negative 1, negative 1. We're going to go 0, positive 1. And 1, 3. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your straight edge and you're going to connect those dots. I want to make sure that you extend your line all the way through the graph. I'm going to take a line right here. So as I'm doing this, I want you guys to go ahead and do that as well. All right, once you have your nice line drawn, go ahead and add some arrows onto the end because we do know that that line is going to go forever. All right, let's move on to example B. For example B, I'm going to show you how to fill in your table using your calculator. So go ahead and take that out. Okay, you're going to hit that Y equals button, and then we're going to plug this in. We have negative 2 minus 4x. Okay, once you enter the equation, you're going to hit second graph, which will give you a table. And then we're going to go ahead and find our x values. Now this one starts off with 0, so that means I'm going to have to arrow up to find out what my negative 1 would be. In this case, I have negative 1, 2, so I'm just going to plug in 2 right here. Then I have 0, negative 2, so I'm going to plug, put negative 2 right there. And 1, negative 6. Now these again are going to be our points that we're going to be plotting. So we have negative 1, 2, 0, negative 2, and 1, negative 6. All right, let's go ahead and plot those. Y 
Once you do that, go ahead and take out your ID, connect those lines, and go all the way through the graph. And then, as always, make sure you have arrows on the end to show that it does go on forever. All right. Example, or, um, example C is going to be on the next page, so go ahead and flip that on over. Now, here we do have fractions, so in this case, it may be easier for you to use your calculator. So let's take that out. I'm going to show you how to enter those. We're going to go y equals again. You're going to hit clear to clear out the previous equation. Now for this fraction, you're going to want to make sure that it is inside parentheses. So I'm going to do 1 divided by 3. Close your parentheses. x minus 1. Okay, we're going to hit second graph. And we're going to go ahead and write our numbers. Now this is negative 1.3 repeating. Okay, now if you're going to put that into a fraction, just so you know, it would be, I'm going to put this out on the side for you, negative 4 thirds. Okay, our 0 was negative 1. And our 1 was negative Point 0.6 repeating. And negative point 0.6 repeating is also negative 2 over 3. Alright, so this one's a little bit more tricky to graph because our points are not on um, exact numbers. So let's see where this is going to take us. We're going to go negative 1 and then one, negative 1 1.3 that'll be a little bit after the 1. So we're going to go negative 1 this way, negative 1 and a little bit more after right there. Okay, then for the second one, we have 0, negative 1. And for our third point, we have 1, negative 0.6. So it's going to be a little bit more than halfway through. All right, go ahead and take your straight edge. Connect those dots all the way through. And make sure to extend them all the way through the graph. Don't forget to add those arrows to the end. All right. The next problems here are you try. So let's go ahead and flip on over to the third page. Um, these are examples. They're called special cases. Now, as you see, example one, it says y equals negative 1. Move this down. So what that means, if I were to plot three points, I'm going to go ahead and make my three sets of parentheses. No matter what point I have for my y value, I'm sorry, my x value, my y is always going to be negative 1. So I'm going to fill that in right now. Now earlier I chose to use negative 1, 0, and 1 as my x values. I'm going to do the same for here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plot each of these points. Now again, it said y equals negative 1, so I put that in the y position right here. Now let's go ahead and plot. We have negative 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1, and 1, negative 1. Let's go ahead and connect our points. Go ahead and draw your line going all the way through. Put your arrows on the end. All right, now as you see, this is a horizontal line. This is why this is called a special case. If we have something set up as y equals, okay, that means it's going to be a horizontal line and it will be going across your y axis. And we proved that because when we gave it three points, we had that negative one in the y position. All right, now let's take a look at this one. And it says x equals 4. So if I were to plot my three points, I know no matter what, my x is always going to be 4. Okay, 
Now I'm going to add my other points that we had decided earlier, negative 1, 0, and 1, and I'm going to plot those points. Now take a guess. Do you think that will be vertical or horizontal? I hope you all said vertical. Let's try this. Over 4, down 1. Over 4, 0. Over 4, up 1. Now when we connect those, let's see. Add our arrows. We do get a vertical line because we have x equals 4. We know that it will be crossing the x-axis. Okay, again, these are called special cases because our answer or our line will either be horizontal or vertical. You tries, we're going to skip on over and we're going to go to the next page. These are testing points. Okay, it says check whether 1, negative 4 is a solution to 3x minus y equals 7. Now, earlier notes, I said a solution would be when a point is on a line. So what we're doing is we're plugging this point in to see if it will actually lie on the line. Now, if it will, then we will have two numbers that will equal one another. So let's try this out. This is our x value. This is our y value. We're going to plug these into our line right here. So we get 3 times 1 minus negative 4 equals 7. Let's go ahead and evaluate here. 3 times 1 is 3. Now we have two negatives here, so they become positive. So 3 plus 4 will give us 7. And does 7 equal 7? I think so. So that would mean that 1 negative 4 is a solution to 3x minus y equals 7. So we're going to write yes. All right, check whether 4 negative 1 half is a solution to x plus 2y equals 5. We're going to do the same thing. Here's our x value and our y value. We're going to plug those in so we get 4 plus 2 times negative 1 half equals 5. Go ahead and evaluate here. Right, and we will get 3 equals 5. Now, 3 clearly does not equal 5, so that we, or now we know that this is not a solution. Okay, so what that would mean is we'd have a line, I'm just going to draw an example, and this point, 4, negative 1 half, would not be placed on the line. It may be off here, like I drew right there. Okay, so that would mean it is not a solution. All right, skip over the U tries. We want you to go ahead and fill out this bottom half. Remember, if you do not answer these questions, you will not get credit for tomorrow's homework points. All right, see you in class.